Good morning, developers. If you're new to the channel, my name is Rob, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the obstacles we face in a WebRTC application and how to overcome them with an SFU or an MCU if we wanted to get bigger than peer-to-peer. -peer. Okay, I've got P2P over here. This is a normal WebRTC layout. It is as simple as things get. Now, if you've made a WebRTC app, you know there's nothing simple about, about getting it to work, but it is this right here is as simple as it's ever going to be. What if we wanted to add C3? So we've got client three and client four. Can we do that in WebRTC? And what if we wanted to add 1,000? What if we wanted 10,000 and compete with Zoom or Google Hangouts or something like that? Can it be done? And out of the box, a mesh, is, it's not really in competition here. I've got it versus mesh. Um, it's, not, it's not going to win that fight, but I put it in there because that's how it works out of the box. The way we overcome the problems we're about to talk about are gonna be with a selective forwarding unit or an SFU. Uh, or a multi-point control unit, not to be confused with Marvel Comic Universe, which is where Thor and Thanos and Iron Man live and so on. Uh, these are the two options that we have. We're gonna talk through them. We're not gonna implement them. We are, we are just gonna talk through them. What are their advantages and, and disadvantages? And, and if I'm talking about some things that you'd understand, I'm getting a little too technical or whatever, I will drop a couple links in the description that will go over how WebRTC works. Okay, so over here we've got client one. Blue is its feed going up and green is C2's feed coming down. What do we do to get C3 in on this conversation? Okay, peer-to-peer. -peer. WebRTC is peer-to-peer. -peer. It is the advantage that WebRTC has. There's no server. There's nobody watching the connection. It is as fast as it possibly can be because they're connected directly to each other. There is no other there's no other aspect or paradigm in WebRTC. This is all it is is peer to peer, which means if we're going to add C3, C2 is going to have to create a connection going down and is going to have to upload the feed coming back. C1 is going to have to send its stuff down and C3 is going to have to send its stuff back. None of these connections know know anything about the other. They're all totally independent. Now we're clever developers, so C1 is bringing back orange and green from C2 and 3. So we'll have a, a window, we'll have one big video, and then we'll have two smaller at the top or whatever, so we can make it look like all the feeds are, are somehow connected, but they're not. The connections, they don't know about each other. They are peer-to-peer -peer only. It's one client, to one client. So to add that third client, that, that one will have to connect directly to the other two. The same thing will be true for C4. We'll have to send that feed up to all three. We'll have to bring one down like that. We'll have to bring two down like that and we'll have to bring three over, okay? You can see why this is called a mesh. Everyone is connected directly to everyone else and it, it's a mesh. It's it's a kind of a confusing a bit of chaos. Now, as a developer, it's not bad. Once you get past the third one, or once I guess you get to third, you should just be looping, and so it doesn't matter how many clients there are. You'll be able to establish all the connections. Your code will remain fairly simple. It's not going to be simple for the clients. Why not? Well, in my experience, this is going to work for maybe a max of five, maybe six clients. Okay, it's it's going to depend on the, the the client machines that you've got. If you have 15 state-of-the-art desktops with good internet connections, maybe you can get up to 10 or 15, okay? 10 or 15 individual connections for every single computer. So, so what's, what's going on on all of these connections? Well, every single client has to encode its feed going up and it's gonna have to upload that feed to all of the other clients. On the other side, when it comes down, it's gonna have to decode the feed and it's going to have to download. Okay, and when I say feed, I'm talking about the, the media stream, the, the get user media, whatever it happens to be. C2 has to encode for everybody, potentially all three times, it depends on how it's set up, and, and it's gonna have to upload constantly in real time that feed, and it's everything that comes down blue, orange, and pink, gonna have to decode all of those and download them in real time. That is a huge bottleneck. If you have a thousand clients, that means client one is gonna have 999 different encode, maybe maybe not 999, but potentially, and is gonna have to upload all 999 of those, gonna have to decode every single one of them 999 times and download all of them in real time. It, it won't work, there's no way. Even a good laptop is not gonna be able to manage, like I said, more than five or six. If you have an unstable internet connection or a phone, it's gonna be less than that. So what do we do? What are our options? Well, the first one is gonna be the SFU, okay? And the way the SFU works, I'll draw it right here in the middle. 
Okay, this is going to create a server. This is going to create that middleman that in WebRTC out of the box we, we get to avoid. It's not going to work because this is crazy inefficient. How could we make it more efficient? Well, let's get our clients up here. We got C1. Okay, back over here for our, our main bottleneck. Which of these two parts is the bigger problem? Which is the bigger bottleneck? When you're encoding or when you are decoding, which of those is more intensive? I'll, I'll give it away to you. When you encode your media stream for somebody else, that is going to be more intensive. Usually that's going to, it's going to just be the CPU. Now things are getting better. Maybe when you're watching this, GPUs can do all the hardware acceleration. But generally speaking, the encoding is going to be more intensive. In your internet connection, your speed, is your upload faster or is your download? Your download probably is, right? So the encoding and the uploading part, that is the really, really bad part. Now they're both bad if you have a thousand clients, but if we could eliminate most of the encoding and the uploading, we could suddenly scale really big. That is exactly what an SFU does. With an SFU, we've got, we've got blue up there for C1. It encodes its feed and uploads it to the SFU. That is the only upload. For C4, that's pink, it goes up there. Our C2 is green, it goes there, and C3. So everybody uploads their one feed to the SFU. The SFU, which is a new pain point, okay, so this is a potential disadvantage. As a developer, you've got to do the WebRTC part, but you've also got to do the SFU part, so you've got a media server, and we'll talk about that later. Everybody's going to send their feed up to the SFU. The SFU is going to turn around and take the feed and send it back out to everybody else. So the blue is going to go out to here, here, and here, the green is gonna go to here, here, and here. The orange, same way. And then pink is the same way to finish. I had C1 backwards, so I redrew it. Everyone is sending one up and bringing three down, okay, in, in all four cases. This is the big win for an SFU up front, is we eliminate the, the main pain point here of the encoding and decoding, we only have to do it one time instead of over here. C1 had to do it three times and that really bogs everything down. In addition to that, it's able to downgrade a, a feed. So if C1 is sending up, we'll say 4K, that's what's coming up, uh, going up in blue, and C2 has a really weak connection, it could downgrade it to just say HD. Or if maybe, maybe if C4 is a, is a cell phone with a weak connection, it might even go all the way down to standard definition. Now SD on a, on a big screen looks terrible, but it's better to see something than nothing. I guess uh, those are decisions that you can make, but the SFU has the ability to downgrade if it needs to, it can also transcribe. So if, if there's a particular codec that's gonna be more efficient, frame rate, etc., all of that stuff can be fixed inside of the media server, the selective forwarding unit. Okay, so that's an SFU. Let me clear it up quick. An MCU is gonna work the same way where we're gonna have a server in the middle, so it's gonna increase complexity, but it is going to solve this other problem, not just the encode, but the decode download part. Everyone is gonna send up their feed to the MCU. Okay, the MCU is going to behave almost like a mixer. So everybody, I've got this box in here where a bunch of magic is going to happen. And out of that box is going to come a media stream that goes out to everybody. This is going to be a uniform, systematic feed that everyone will see. You can, you, there's a little bit more flexibility than that, but that means you have one going up and one coming down. And, and you can do whatever you want in there. You can, if, if C2 is not sending anything up or doesn't need to be seen by almost anybody, then the feed can completely el eliminate that, right? So you just reduce the bandwidth required down. C4 is sending up 4K. Almost nobody needs to see 4K because this is a really small video that gets downgraded to HD, etc. A whole bunch of magic happens inside this green box and it all gets filtered out, okay? So the MCU is, I guess, the super version of an SFU and an SFU is a better version than peer-to-peer. -peer. Is an MCU obviously the best? No. <laughs> the answer there is no. At least I almost never use it. And the reason for that is this. I guess I should have made them green. But an MCU is crazy expensive. Not just because we need this to be a monster. This is not going to be a free tier AWS or Azure machine. This is going to need to scale horizontally in a really big way. We're going to need a ton of big machines to be able to manage, you know, 
dozens of feeds potentially coming in. We're also going to have the complexity of a whole bunch of developers that are going to have to manage this thing. If the MCU has any issue, nobody's going to get anything because no one will be connected. There won't be any feeds coming through. Only one feed ever goes out. The nice thing is if everybody shouts congratulations or happy birthday or something at the same time, everyone will see it at the same time because the feed is, is uniform. But again, if the server has any issues, everyone will have issues. The SFU eliminates this for the most part. Uh, I, I use a media server called uh, MediaSoup as my SFU, and it almost always will serve my, my needs. The only reason I ever look at an MCU is if I am in a corporate situation where we really are going to have dozens or hundreds consistently, and money is no objects, and development time is you know can, can be whatever it needs to be, that's when, in my experience, you would go to an MCU. There are services out there that provide MCUs uh, directly that you can use, but again, an SFU typically is going to be cost effective and usually will be able to serve whatever your needs are. If you're looking at getting into the thousands, well, <laughs> then you need to start thinking about MCU and you also need to be ready to spend some money. A brief review over the advantages and disadvantages of each of the three options. Starting with the mesh, <laughs> the good, well, it's simple, free, and private. That's WebRTC out of the box. If those three things are the most important thing to you, they are hard, <laughs> hard to beat. Under the bad, um, you just won't be able to use this, which is really what this video is all about, if you've got more than four or five clients. It, at least in 2024, maybe, maybe years down the road that won't be the case, but uh, it has a variable quality experience because every device is gonna, is gonna have a different CPU, is gonna have different bandwidth, we, we won't be able to control that experience. And no control, because there's no server, everything is direct, and that's really the opposite of private. Um, we, we don't have any control because it's private. We hop over to the SFU, and, and the SFU that I use is called MediaSoup. This is gonna solve most of our use cases, and I will link that video, how to implement MediaSoup once I have it up. But the good here, it scales. It eliminates the big issue. Again, encoding and uploading, that's eliminating that is gonna solve most of, your, most of your use cases. It is adaptive and flexible, so you as a, as a developer can make a lot of flexible decisions. The client can also make some flexible decisions. And like we talked on the board, you can change the codec, the frame rate, lots of adaptive options. You also have control because now you have a server. Unfortunately, because you have a server, it's no longer direct. Those two things are kind of opposite of each other, but you can't have both. You do have a server to manage now, which makes it more complicated. So the bad of, of an SFU, it, it really comes down to, do you want to have more than, you know, more clients than a mesh can handle? The MCU, the good here is that it scales really big. One up and one down, it's never gonna get better than that for the client. You get consistent quality because everybody will get the same stream and you have a lot of control with even more features than an SFU uh, has. The bad, well, it's all of these. We have a server to manage, it's more complicated, it's not direct. It's also expensive. It's not just complicated, it's very complicated. And you have this new one point of failure, which if it goes down, no one will get anything. And there's, there's not gonna be hardly any client flexibility. They're gonna get whatever the MCU sends out. So this is the best one. If money is no object and complicated is okay, but uh, an SFU is typically what I will use. Thanks so much for watching. Keep an eye out for more WebRTC videos.